Hey everybody, it's Pastor Jamie here. I hope this video finds you all doing well. Um, this is what we're going to try to do for the foreseeable future on Wednesdays. Um, in addition to maybe some short devotional videos like the one I sent out yesterday morning, um, and of course our Sunday morning live stream we'll be doing, uh, we will also be trying to do uh, kind of a Wednesday Bible study. Of course, Wednesdays at Jamestown are always uh, called prayer meeting. We get together and we share our needs and our prayer requests together. And then we always have a time of Bible study. Uh, so in this video, <clears throat> the best of our ability, I want to try to, to have a Bible study, but I also want us to talk briefly about prayer. Uh, one good thing about doing these videos is you get to reach some new people. Um, so if you're not a, a regular Jamestown attender or a member, but you're watching this, uh, welcome to the broadcast. And uh, so, but I thought we would start by, by using um, a, a method of prayer that we use at our church to remind us how to pray. When the disciples went to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us how to pray, of course, his answer resulted in what we know well as the Lord's Prayer. And this prayer method takes the word pray and breaks it down in, into an acrostic method of, of prayer. So maybe after I go through this, maybe you just kind of want to hit pause on the video and, uh, and have your own personal time of prayer. And in a moment, I will lead us all in a prayer. But I wanted to share this method with you. And, and again, if you come to our church, you've heard this before, but just, just bear with me. First of all, it takes the letter P, and it reminds us that our prayers should begin with a time of praise. Uh, no matter what's going on in our life, and certainly no matter what's going on in our world with this virus right now, when we go to the Lord in prayer, we still have an awful lot to be thankful for. And when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he said, when you pray, pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Uh, so when we begin to pray, no matter what is going on in our life, let's pause to give God some praise for his goodness and his grace. Uh, the R stands for repentance. Of course, when we pray, we want to approach God with a pure heart and a clean heart. Uh, so we want to ask God to forgive us of our sin. And also, as we saw in our devotion video yesterday, uh, we want to forgive others because the Bible says in order for us to receive forgiveness, we must first be willing to give forgiveness. So when you go to the Lord in prayer, you give him praise for all he's done, and then you just pause for a moment and, and repent of your sin, ask God to forgive you of your sin. And uh, then it takes the letter A, and here comes our time to ask for things. You know, the Bible says, that God wants to hear from us. He says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for us. The Bible says, make your request known to God. And of course, we know God knows everything. God knows everything about us. Uh, he knows what we're going through, what we're dealing with, and yet he still wants us to, to cast those cares by name. Ask God for whatever it is you need help with in your life. And then finally, it takes the letter Y, and that reminds us to yield ultimately to the will of God. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about that in our devotion today. Ultimately, when we, when we pray, we want God's will to be done because we know God's will is best. And sometimes not only do we give God our needs, but we tell God how we want those needs met. But in reality, what we need to do is ask God for his will to be done. It's how Jesus tells us to pray. Uh, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's how Jesus demonstrated he prayed there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. So we're going to begin uh, with a time of, of prayer. I sent out an email to our church and ask them to send in some prayer requests. I'm going to try to put all of those requests together and send them out in email form to our church. Um, again, if, if you do not have a church home and you're watching this video, if you would like to be included in our church email distribution list uh, in the comments section below, you can send me your email address or you can send it in message form. I'll do my best to get you added. Now, what that means is you'll get every church email we, we send out just as a word of warning. 
But during this time where we're not able to meet in, in person, uh, we really need to be able to, uh, to send out those emails and get word out about various things that we're trying to do. I'll be sending out links to uh, videos and prayer requests and things like that. Uh, but I've already received two of those prayer requests, so I thought I would just share them um, with you. Uh, please be in prayer for Rhonda Baxter Parker and um, also for Maddie Berry, a 15-year-old in Madrid who is not doing well uh, and is having a hard time, as I understand it, receiving care because of the coronavirus. So let's, let's remember those requests, if you would. Uh, you're more than welcome to pray along with me as you watch this video, but I'd also encourage you again, maybe you just want to hit pause and spend some time in prayer with God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, I'm going to do my best to follow this, this method, this pray method that I shared with you a moment ago as well. So let's pray. Father, we do thank you and we praise you for your goodness and grace in good times and in bad. Uh, we thank you that that you're still God, that you're still in control. And uh, Lord, I don't know how many people are watching this, and I don't know exactly what's going on in their heart or life. But I just pray that, that your goodness would be made evident to them, no matter uh, whether or not they're, they're sick or struggling financially or with their job or what's going on, Father. I just, we just want to pause today and give you praise in the midst of our storms, in the midst of this virus that we're dealing with, uh, not just as a community or even as a country, but globally. God, we still see your goodness all around us, Father. So we thank you and we, we praise you for who you are and all you do. And God, as I come to your throne today, I do want to seek your forgiveness for my sin. God, anything in my heart and life that would prohibit me from, from being able to bring to you my, my cares and, and re request anything that would hinder me from being used by you. Father, I just pray that you would forgive me. I, I confess that I am a sinner, uh, that I, I fall short on a daily basis. And I'm just thankful for your grace and your mercy and forgiveness. And God, as I seek your forgiveness, Lord, I also want to forgive others who have perhaps sinned against me or someone that has hurt me. Uh, whether it was intentional or unintentional. Father, I pray that I would not harbor any bitterness toward anybody for anything because, God, I know you offer forgiveness full and free. So, Father, I pray that you'd help me uh, to offer forgiveness to others in the same way. And, God, we do have many requests uh, to bring before your throne. We have many people in our church even before this virus and many people in our community uh, God, that we're struggling in need of a healing touch. Um, and God, now we have people in the thousands struggling with this, with this virus, many very, very uh, serious cases. Um, but Father, we know you're the great physician. And while many doctors and, and scientists are working around the clock to find um, medicine and treatment for this virus, God, we know that you're able through a mighty touch of your hand to provide healing. And God, we pray that you would do that. Uh, whether people are sick with the virus or sick with other things physically. Um, and God, we do want to pray for those working so hard. The doctors and the nurses, the hospital staff, people who are really sacrificing and putting themselves at risk uh, for the betterment of others. God, we just, want to, we just want to pray for them. We pray for strength and patience and, and mercy and your blessings on them and their family. Lord, protect them from being infected. God, please be with our leaders. These are some difficult times with difficult decisions. God, I pray that you would give our leaders discernment and wisdom and then, Lord, the courage to do what needs to be done and help us as citizens uh, of the world to obey our governing authorities when, when possible. And um, Lord, may we do our part to be good neighbors as well and to be on the lookout for needs around us, uh, God, that, that we can meet. And uh, Father, I pray that we'll see this, this virus go away very soon. And Lord, I pray you'll do it in such a way that you would receive honor, glory, and praise. Lord, be with our churches as we seek to try to find new ways to minister to people during this time when we can't meet in person. God, give us wisdom about that as well and use our feeble efforts in a way 
where people can be encouraged, where the gospel can go forth, and uh, again, where, where you can receive glory. Ultimately, God, we know that your ways are not our ways and that you're much more wise than we are. God, we don't seek to offer up um, resolutions or answers. We just ask you to do your will and to do it in a way uh, that you would receive praise and honor and glory. Father, today as we, uh, as we study your word, I know people will be watching this video at various times, but Lord, when they do, I pray you'll use it um, to encourage them and to strengthen our faith and to draw us into a closer relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, our, our Bible study is going to come from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I am praying about God's leadership for a series during this time. Not even sure how long we're going to be doing this. Still not sure how long this quarantine and, and not being able to meet in public is going to go. So I'm praying about perhaps a series to do on, on Wednesday, some, some lessons and some messages that will fit together. Uh, but for today, I wanted, to, I wanted to think about this. When God says no. When God says no. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 7. The Apostle Paul writes these words, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, God said to Paul in response to his prayer, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Have you ever prayed to God for something and, 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 and you didn't get the answer you wanted? You know, sometimes we're guilty of, of saying, well, you know, I prayed about something and I asked God to do something and, um, and he didn't answer it in the way I wanted to and we're guilty of saying God didn't answer our prayer when in reality... Um, he did answer our prayer. We just didn't like the answer. When, when God says, call to me and I will answer you in Jeremiah 33, 3, that, that's a promise we can take to the bank. You know, if you ask me a question or ask me to do something and I can't do it or I, I'm not ready to do it or I don't want to do it, I'll, I'll say no or I may say not yet or not right now. I've given you an answer. It's just not the answer perhaps that, that you wanted. So when we pray to God, sometimes God answers, and he'll answer immediately. He'll answer in a way that, that we were asking him to do. Maybe it's for healing or something like, like that. But we also know that there are times when we pray to God for something, and the answer is not what we want. The answer does not come when we want. So how do we respond to that? What do we do when God says no and what else does God say to us when he says no? I love this passage of scripture and I love the truths contained here in it. Let, let's, let's, let's dig in here. Number one, let's note together the resistance in Paul's life. The resistance. In, in verse 7, the Bible says, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh. Now, nobody knows exactly what this thorn was in Paul's flesh. People have speculated on this about like they have concerning what Jesus wrote in the dirt that day. Uh, you'll remember the, the, the story when the woman was caught in adultery and uh, 
and, and, and the Pharisees, they were all standing around. They had stones in their hand. And, and Jesus, the Bible says, knelt down and he began to draw in the dirt. I've heard so many pastors and, and Christian thinkers try to, try to imagine what it was that, that Jesus was riding in, in the dirt. And here's what I've learned in over 20 years of ministry. We don't know. We don't know. And anybody that tells you they, they did know, I know this. They're not telling the truth because nobody knows. And nobody knows exactly what Paul's thorn in the flesh was. But we do know some things about this thorn in the flesh. First of all, we know that it was painful. We do know it was painful because Paul is calling this thing a thorn. Have you ever been stuck by a thorn? Have you ever had a, had a splinter in, in your finger? You'll almost forget that thing's there until you touch something just right and it'll, and it'll hit you again. That, that, that pain will... Whatever this was that Paul was dealing with, it was a painful experience. It may have been physical pain. It may have been emotional pain. It may have been that somebody in Paul's life was being a pain. Uh, whatever it was, this was a painful experience. And, you know, to put this into our context again, and I talked about this in Sunday's message as well, this is a, this is a painful process we're going through uh, with this coronavirus. This, this is causing a lot of sacrifice. It's causing a lot, of, a lot of change in our life. For some, this is much more painful than others. But maybe it's not this coronavirus. Maybe you've got some other pain in your life. Maybe your marriage is struggling. Uh, maybe you're having issues in your home in some way. Maybe your, your job. Uh, maybe you have a health situation outside of this, this virus. You know, let, let's not forget, there's still other people struggling physically uh, during this, this time. Whatever this was, it was real and it was painful. We also know this, it was beyond Paul's control. This was not something that Paul could change on his own. This wasn't a result of something Paul was necessarily doing. It was something outside of his control. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, I know that because he went to God for it. He's now going to God and saying, God, I've got this thorn in the flesh and it's painful and I can't do anything about it. Number three, we notice that this thorn was being used by the devil. It was being used by Satan. Paul called it a messenger of Satan and he said it was to buffet him. Uh, Satan was trying to use this thorn in a way that it would hinder or hurt Paul. Uh, the, the devil wanted to stop Paul's progress. The, the devil wanted to stop Paul's ministry. He wanted to steal Paul's joy. And you know, that, that's what the devil wants to do with every crisis, with every painful situation. He wants it to be something that frustrates the people of God. He really would like to, to put some strain on us to the point that we say, you know what, if, if this is what the result of living for God is, then, I, then I, I give up. I've heard some people say, you know, it seems like when I started trying to live for God, my life got harder in, instead of easier. So I'm just going to forget it. That's exactly what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to give up. He wants you to stop. Uh, he wants you to, to think things like, you know what, if, if, if God really was good, then this coronavirus thing wouldn't be happening. This world is spinning out of control. And uh, the devil wants to use every bad thing, every harmful and painful situation to cause us to stop or to question God or to become frustrated or, or to break us in some way, shape, or form. And Paul said, look, Satan himself is using this. I want, to do, I want to do some things for God, and Satan's using this to stop me. He's using this to, to slow me down. But number four, we also know that while this thorn was being used by Satan, it was something allowed by God. Did you hear what, what Paul said? He says, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. Paul, Paul had experienced some tremendous things in his relationship with God. He had literally, in, in, in some way, shape, or form, been called up into heaven and sent back and told not to talk about that situation very much. There wasn't much he could say about it. But, you know, if God chose you or I to do that, it kind of calls our, our head to swell. Pride may build up in our, in our heart. And he adds at the end of verse 7, lest I be exalted above measure. 
So, so, so watch, this is something God allowed in Paul's life, not as a result of some sinful behavior. Paul was actually doing what God had called him to do. Uh, to, you know, and it ca caused Paul a lot, of, a lot of hardship. Ministry was not easy for Paul, but he was faithful to it. He was trying to be obedient. He was trying to do what God had called him to do. And God says, you know what? If, I, if, 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 you know, if you're not careful, Paul, your head's going to get too big. And your pride's going to be built up in your heart. And the Bible teaches this consistently, Old Testament, New Testament. God cannot use somebody with a proud heart. If God wants to use you, he may use something to humble you, something to remind you from time to time that he is still God. God allows some things into our life that may not be pleasant, but they have a purpose. And Paul seemed to understand that whatever this thorn was, God was using it to accomplish something good in his life. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Here's something Satan was using to harm Paul, and God is using it to help Paul. Paul says, God is allowing this thorn in my life to keep me humble. And again, to bring this into, the, into today's context, one thing this COVID-19 virus has done is it has reminded us that we are really not in control. Sometimes in, a, in our country especially, we look around, we have so many blessings and, and we're in, we think we're in control of a lot of things. We, we've got great health care and, and, and uh, we're, we, we've got good jobs. You may be making a good, good living, but in a moment, God can cause everything to come to an immediate halt. And, and, and I think God can use this situation to remind us that we're really not in control. These things that we use to build up a, a sort of self-sufficiency, God can remove. These things that we look to for pleasure and distraction, God can remove and get us on our knees in prayer for him. And I certainly hope among all the other things God wants to use this for, I hope you'll use it for that. Because the Bible says when God's people are humbled and they begin to pray and turn from their wicked ways, then healing can come. Revival can come. And let me tell you, even more than we need a physical healing from the COVID-19 virus in this country, we need a spiritual revival and renewal. And I, I hope God will use it for that purpose. So first of all, we see here the resistance, the thorn in the flesh. Number two, though, notice the request in verse 8. Paul writes that he went to the Lord in prayer. He says, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Paul did exactly what God tells us to do. When we have a care, when we have a problem, come to me. Cast your care on me. Like I said earlier, make your request known from me. Now notice now, I believe if anybody outside of Jesus and the disciples knew how to pray, it's probably the Apostle Paul. And Paul says he prayed. First of all, he prayed a fervent prayer, just as the Bible tells us to do. The Bible says he pleaded with God. He pleaded with God in a passionate way. Uh, he, it was also a faithful request. He didn't just ask one time. He did what the Bible says, to keep knocking, to keep seeking and going to God. So he prayed three different times for God to answer this prayer. Again, Paul doing exactly what the Bible tells us to do. Not only was it a faithful prayer request, but it was a faith-filled request. Paul seems to indicate no wavering in his faith that if it were God's will, God could do something about this thorn. And listen, if you don't have faith in your heart that God can do what you're praying for, you might as well not even pray. We have to pray with faith. But Paul did. Paul was praying the way and with the faith that God told him to do. And I, and I want to make this a point. Because I've heard some people say, you know, if God doesn't answer your prayer the way you want him to, you just didn't have enough faith. Or maybe you didn't pray the right way. Maybe you didn't say the right 
thing. Maybe God's mad at you and he's just not, he's just not listening. But sometimes God answers, again, as I said in the introduction, but it's not the way we want it to be. Paul did everything right. This was not a selfish request either. So Paul's praying with the right heart, with the right spirit, with the right motive. But watch number three, the response from God. In spite of how Paul prayed, listen to the response from God. Verse nine. And he said to me, God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Even though those words are not there, here's what God said to Paul. No, I'm not going to remove this, this thorn from your flesh. But I'm thankful that when God says no, he doesn't just stop there. there, there there's not a period there. There's a comma. God says no, but I'm not going to remove this thorn from your flesh, Paul, but. Now listen to what he says because this is good. God says, first of all, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. That word grace means unmerited, undeserved favor. The favor of God that we do not deserve. And here's what God says uh, to, to Paul. My grace is enough. That word sufficient there means enough. Paul, I'm not going to remove this thorn but I'm going to give you enough grace that you can endure. Some people have asked me before, what exactly is grace? I believe grace to be whatever you need at that time. So, you know, Paul thought, well, I need this thorn removed. And God said, no, you don't need it removed. You just need more grace. You just need more grace. And Paul, I got good news for you. My grace is enough. I've got enough grace to give you. And poor Here's what I've learned about God, and I'm sure you have too. Not only is his grace enough, it goes beyond. As the psalmist said in Psalm 23, my cup runs over with God's grace. Sometimes we'll go to God and we'll say, God, I need this and I need that. And, and God doesn't give us what we're asking for. And we overlook what he does give. He gives us his grace. And his grace is enough. Again, I want to put this into our context right now. To think about this, this virus. There, there, there's a lot of things we don't know. We don't have any idea when we're going to be able to meet again in our churches. We don't know when a vaccine's going to be developed. We don't know when some treatment is going to be developed. We don't know what tomorrow holds. The news changes constantly, even daily. We don't really know what to expect, but I do know this. His grace is enough. Whatever comes as a result of COVID-19, God's grace is enough. And that's true for any part of your life. I don't know what's going on in your marriage or in your family, but God's grace is enough. I don't know what's going on in your life physically, but I know God's grace is enough. I don't know what's going on in your life financially, but I know God's grace is enough. Paul says God didn't do what he asked him to do, but he filled his life and his heart with grace. Not only did he say, my grace is sufficient, but number two, he said, my strength is perfected. He says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now listen, Paul didn't say his strength was made perfect in weakness. God is saying, my strength, God's strength is made perfect in weakness. That, that word perfect or perfected there means brought to completion or is made fully present. In the present tense, that word indicates it's not yet a finished product, but that it's still in the process of being made perfect. One commentary I read uh, said, his weakness becomes the vehicle by which God's grace and Christ's power is most fully manifested to himself and to others. So, so God is saying, not only is my grace sufficient, but I'm going to give you my strength. This, this thorn may be making you weak, Paul, 
But as you get weak, I'm going to increase my strength and my power in you, and I'm going to do it in such a way that those around you are fully aware that it's not your strength, that it's God's strength working in your life and through your life. Isn't that awesome? I don't know what kind of thorn you have in your life today, but his grace is sufficient and his strength is being put on display in your life. So watch finally the fourth part of our little outline today, the reaction of Paul. When God says no, we've seen what he gives instead, but how do we respond? Well, here's how Paul responded. He said, therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul turned this trial and this tribulation into a testimony. He said, I tell you what, I, I'm not necessarily happy about this thorn, but I'm happy with the result because when my strength gets low, God's strength kicks in. And Paul realized that he can do more under God's power than he ever could do with his own power. God's strength was being made perfect. And he says, I, I will gladly, I will glory in these trials. I will glory in this, in this thorn. Look, when, when, a, when a thorn comes into our life, when a trial or a tribulation comes in our life, we, we, got, we got two choices. We can get bitter or we can get better. We can get bitter or we can get better. We can either listen and allow uh, the devil to use it to harm us or to hinder us, or we can rest in God's grace and strength and power and let him make us better. So Paul said again, I'm not thankful for the thorn, but I'm thankful for the results. And, and really, just as a reminder, the, the results were twofold. The results were twofold. Number one, God was accomplishing his purpose in his life. God's not going to let me get so prideful that he can't use me. So God's purpose was going to be done with this thorn, and Paul was thankful for that. But not only that, Paul says, I'm thankful that I get to learn something about God I wouldn't have learned any other way. I, I'm now operating with grace I didn't have before the thorn came, and I have realized God's power in a way that I had never realized it before the thorn came. So again, I don't know where you are today. I don't know what's going on in your life. Today, you may be discouraged, you may be worried, you may be concerned, but I'm here to tell you on the authority of God's word, his grace is enough and his strength and power is being perfected in you and we can rest in that. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video today and I hope to see you very soon. God bless.